In this video, I'm going to show you an effective method to be able to take one vector and write it in terms of some other basis, to write it in some other coordinate system. And while I show you the best way to do this kind of computation, I'm also going to introduce a little bit of notation that's going to help us going forward in the course. So the problem is this. I have some particular basis specified. In this case, it looks like the basis 1, 1 and minus 2, 1. Then I have some vector, for example, the vector 4, 1. And what I want to know how to do is, how do I write that vector in the B basis? That is, if I take my 4, 1, what are the coefficients, the C1 and the C2, so that it can be written here as a linear combination of the B1 and the B2? Now, whenever you see a linear combination, I want to have a little bit of an alarm bell go off in your mind. Because linear combinations and multiplying by a matrix are the same thing. Indeed, writing this linear combination is just the same thing as saying that this is the multiplication of the C1 and C2 by this particular matrix, the 1, 1, minus 2, 1. Well, what do I have? I have a linear system. A matrix times a vector is equal to some other vector, and I want to solve that system. And I could use some row reductions, I could use my normal trick to solve a linear system of equations, but I want to talk about it in terms of invertible matrices. So the matrix that I have here, I can give it a name. This matrix is called P sub B. This is a matrix associated to every single basis. And you just take the vectors of the basis and put them in as the columns of the matrix. And then the other thing to note is that the C1, C2, we previously defined that to be the vector X written in the B basis. So this is just going to be my vector X written in the B basis. If 4, 1 is my X, then the C1, C2 is my X written in the B basis. Now, when I'm talking about all of R2 or all of R3, the, the P matrix I get, this is going to be a square matrix. We're talking about different bases of R2, so they're all going to have two components and there's going to be two of them. And in fact, because it's a basis where the vectors are literally independent, if you row reduce, it's going to have a leading one in every single column, and so that this matrix is going to be invertible. So I can go and reverse this process. I've got right now x is equal to a matrix times the vector x written in the B basis, I can invert it, and what I'm going to get is this. I'm going to get that the C1, C2 is the inverse of that matrix times the 4, 1, times the x. And I know how to take the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. You swap the A and the D, you put a minus sign in front of the B and the C, you divide out by AD minus BC. So I've inverted this particular matrix, and now I can just multiply it out, and what do I get? I get the value 2 minus 1. In fact, we always have these two different ways to solve systems. You can do the row reduction methodology, or if it's a square matrix, you can just invert it. But the nice part about being able to invert it is now you can do it for every single vector at once. You just always have to just do this multiplication. You don't have to repeat the row reduction step every single time. So if you can use invertible matrices, I usually suggest that that's the superior way to do it in generality. Regardless, I've now figured it out. My C1, C2 is equal to the 2 minus 1. And in doing so, I actually can come up with two sort of general formulas. The first is going to be that X can always be written as this P matrix times X written in the B basis. Or to flip it around the other way, X written in the B basis can be the inverse of this P matrix multiplied by X. Where the, where the PB matrix just has the first and second basis vector as the first and second column. 